Good morning. Happy Easter. Happy long weekend. Up top, something wonderful happened last week. I signed up for the English Heritage Membership Programme, which means that I, and by proxy, all of you, get access to over 400 historical British sites. And today, we're using it for the first time to go to Richborough Roman Castle and Amphitheatre. It is a bit colder than it has been the past few days, but it's not going to stop us. It's definitely not going to get in the way of a good video. Uh, so, let's get cracking. All right, there it is. Richborough Roman Castle Ruins. It is extremely windy outside. I can hear it. But hopefully we can uh, we can shield the microphone enough that it doesn't disrupt the video. All right, let's get going. I'm just making my way over now to the entrance and that wind is bitter. I really hope you can hear this. All right, just on the outer edges of the fort, the outer wall. So this fort was constructed back in the 40s. And by the 40s, I mean the actual original 40s, as in 43 AD. So just going to have a little walk around the outer perimeter and then we'll head inside and have a look around. And then after we've finished on the inside, we'll have a look from the air. Okay, we have these uh, circular blocks in the corners that would most likely extend upwards to form some kind of a lookout post. All right, making my way around. That wind is punching me in the face. My eyes are starting to cry and it's really stinging me. So I think I'm going to head inside because at least I'll have some shelter from the elements. Whew. All right, over the bridge and inside we go. Got some other visitors today, but it's still quiet enough for us to talk and not be looked at like weirdos. Okay, here we go. Richborough occupation started with the invasion of Britain in AD 43 and lasted beyond the end of the formal Roman rule in the 5th century. The site as seen today shows over 400 years of history. So, let's check it out. And this is the first place that we're checking out with the uh, with the membership program. You basically put your name down, what time you want to come, and bang, day out, sorted. Definitely worth doing, considering you know how things are right now. Although lockdown is coming to an end, it's still you know an entire country's history primed for exploration. Very nice. You see here the stonework. I use that term very loosely, but I mean these are This is sediment and pebbles and rocks. You just pick up on the beach and flint all mortared together very crude But who am I to judge? I can't build the Lego house let alone a Roman fort Okay, pressing on, I'm going to head back out because these ditches here, number one, and just past it, over the bridge, number two, right here, these were the first defences implemented at the fort. The earliest Roman presence at Richborough is represented by those two parallel defensive ditches. They protected a landing area used by the Roman soldiers during the invasion of AD 43. You can see the markings here for some type of building, probably a civilian settlement or a storage, um, storage hut. Oh, we'll find out later. All right, more ditches. One. Two, and we'll press on up these stairs. There we go, another plaque, another info plaque. See what else we can learn. All right, here we are. This 
area here was the supply base and it says that Richborough became an important military and naval supply base lasting until about AD 85. So you got 42 years from the start of the invasion acting as a supply base. The base was laid out as a grid with the roads subdividing it into rectangular blocks. A civilian settlement possibly grew up around the supply base to provide the soldiers with goods and services. Near to the sea lay a courtyard building, probably a hotel for official visitors to the newest province of the Roman Empire. Wow. Okay, and just in front of us here, this looks like a, a crucifix. So, could be some kind of church or lookout tower. I don't know, we'll find out. Have a look. So you can see the uh, the separate rooms where they would have been. I mean, they're very small rooms, so you know, stands to reason that people were a lot smaller back then, like Hobbiton. Yeah, let's just check the uh, this crucifix thingy. It's quite interesting. But then you see with these right angle blocks here, definitely. Yeah, it makes more sense that it would be a lookout point at the centre of the uh, of the fort. Yes. Yeah, at this point here was the centre of the civilian settlement. The Romans quickly conquered the tribes of southern Britain. The troops moved on and Richborough soon developed as a busy town and port. So this was the, uh, the centerpiece of the civilian settlement. There we go. Okay, I actually know what this part is without having to read the plaque. This is St. Augustine's Chapel. Now, that's all I know about it, so I will give it a read off. Just gonna have a walk around the uh, the outline blocks, the foundation blocks, it is very small, but you know, it's it's a chapel. Don't have to be very large. Let's see what it says. What more information we can uh, we can find? So yes, this is Saint Augustine's Chapel, built in the late Saxon period with a rectangular nave and chancel and a western porch. Rebuilt in the 12th century and then demolished again in the 17th century and just my luck it started to rain so we've got the wet and the cold to contend with i hope you appreciate what i go through for you all right we'll make our way down got another building here well considering that we found out it was also a civilian settlement it makes sense that these were just normal houses so over this way here, you actually have the river. I mean, it's now sort of occupied by Pfizer, but this would have been the, uh, the supply route for the fort. I'm not sure how well you can see. We're gonna have a look down because you can actually see the river. Uh, yeah, you've got Pfizer in the background there, the railway and the river. Can you see? Well, trust me, it's there. Okay, we've got another settlement here. Let's have a walk. Still falling apart even today. All right, so this outline here, this structure was called the Mancio, meaning to stay, was built, demolished and rebuilt several times. The first timber building, a series of rooms arranged by a courtyard, was constructed during the first century AD. It was perhaps used either for administration or as a hotel for official visitors. 
During the 2nd century AD, the Mansio was rebuilt in stone and later underwent a series of minor alterations. When most of the buildings in this area were leveled to make way for an earth and timber fortlet, the Mansio remained. Slightly later, the building of the stone fort led to the Mansio finally going out of use and a bathhouse was built where it once stood. So, what you can see here would have been a bathhouse. Interesting. Oh. <laughs> I finally sheltered from the wind. Man, that was harsh. Absolutely bitter cold. But let's crack on. There's a, there's a fixture just ahead, which, if memory serves, was, um, was uh, I don't know what you call it, but uh, people would sit in it to be baptised. It was a part of the baptism ritual. Uh, well, we're going to check it out. You see these concentric defence ditches around the, uh, the centre point dug all the way around but you'll see it when, uh, when I take the drone up and believe me this place is far more spectacular from the air Yeah, uh, here it is So once the fort was uh, no longer used by Roman troops it became a place of worship and just a uh, a civilian settlement. This is where people would be baptised. Yeah, you've got these foundation blocks just in the ditches, so would stand to reason that these are defensive structures. So, I'm going to crack on to the outer wall and see what we can find there, and then We'll take the drone up and we'll have a look at this place from a bird's eye perspective. Okay, so we're just approaching a gap in the wall here. Okay, yeah, there we go. Let's have a look. Oh, that wind picked up again. All right. The exterior. It's got parts of the wall there that, uh, yeah, I would imagine that they fell down and were just left there rather than being part of a second wall. Uh, more defensive ditches, well, the same ditches, just uh, carried on, just extended. Okay, so during the later 3rd century AD, the Roman Empire was becoming increasingly unstable. Coastal raids led to a series of new forts being built around the southeast coast of England and along the coast of Gaul. These forts, including one at Richborough, were under a single commander and became known as the Forts of the Saxon Shore. This fort, which now dominates the site, was rectangular in shape and surrounded by two ditches. The massive walls were built of smaller ashlar blocks with courses of tile around a core of flint and mortar. The towers stood at regular intervals along the walls. Only the bathhouse and two buildings thought to be temples survived from this fort. All right, there we are. We got the rock, the tiles, the flint and mortar. So you can see the structure and how it was built. You know, at least this much of it has been stood up for this long, so can't really complain. I do you believe it? It's actually starting to snow. That is just fantastic news. All right, I'm going to make my way back to the center over the ditches and we'll have a look at the last remaining structure before we take the drone up. All right, the last one we haven't had a look at yet. I'll go and find out what it is, but it's quite a small building or would have been quite a small building let's get down the steps and find out okay well I couldn't find anything on the plaques that are dotted around the fort but I'll do a bit of research later on and I'll put it in the the voiceover section of the aerial tour Welcome to Richborough Roman Fort and Amphitheatre.
Richborough is a key site in the history of Roman Britain, used during the entire length of the occupation from the invasion of AD 43 until the end of Roman rule around 410. Though now an inland backwater, 2000 years ago it lay on the Kent coast and it was here that the invading Roman forces came ashore in Britain. As the main entry point from mainland Europe, over time the site developed from a military supply base into a thriving port town and later a massive fort. Today, the impressive ruins and the vast collection of objects found at Richborough give us an exceptional insight into four centuries of life there. Richborough now lies two miles inland in the East Kent marshes, but in Roman times it overlooked the strategically important Wantsum Sea Channel, which divided the Isle of Thanet from Kent. In AD 43, at least part of Roman Emperor Claudius's invasion force of 40,000 men landed here in what would have been a massive military operation of great complexity. They quickly built a defensive barrier at the invasion site in the form of two deep parallel V-shaped ditches with a rampart on the seaward side running for at least 650 meters. These fortifications would have defended the invasion beachhead giving protection to ships, troops and supplies. In the immediate area of East Kent, the invasion force encountered no resistance and the Roman army moved to campaign further inland. Richborough then became a military supply base. There is evidence for large storehouses or granaries, which would have been used to provision the troops as they made their way inland. An Anglo-Saxon church was established at Richborough, probably dating to the 10th century, though it may have had timber pred... An Anglo-Saxon church was established at Richborough, probably dating to the 10th century, though it may have had a timber predecessor as early as the 7th century. More recent aerial photography and geophysical surveys have revealed the extent of the Roman town. Much about this complex site, however, still remains to be discovered. Okay, there you are, folks. That was Richborough Roman Castle and Amphitheatre. I hope you enjoyed the video, definitely. Well, in my opinion, looks a lot more impressive from the air, but I'm going to leave you there. Enjoy the rest of your long weekend, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much. Love you lots. Bye.